What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and Razer just revealed their very own Elgato Stream Deck with the brand new Razer Stream Controller. This the answer to the very popular Elgato Stream Deck. Now, the Stream Deck, not to be confused with the Steam Deck, and the new Razer Stream Controller is not a controller for the Steam Deck, not to be confused with the discontinued Steam Controller, and the Razer controller is not to be confused with the Loop Deck Live. Oh shit. So yeah, if during that intro you thought, hey, that stream controller looks pretty uh, familiar, it's because it is the Loop Deck Live. This is already a pre-existing product that's been out there for well over a year, but has now just sort of been slapped with a Razer logo, and now it is the Razer streaming controller. Now, Razer is upfront about it. They're not claiming this is their own creation. They did say it was in a collaboration with Loop Deck. And that collaboration is literally the only difference between the two, with the Loop Deck branding up top versus now the Razer branding on the bottom. So I've used the Loop Deck Live. I've done a video on it. I used it for video editing and photo editing for a while. That was probably around 16, 18 months ago at this point. And I will admit I've stopped using it just due to how complex the software was back then, just being sort of sluggish and not user friendly. But we'll talk on that and the changes coming up in a minute. But that was really the entire purpose of the Loop Deck Live, was for photo editing, video editing, the whole editing aspect of content creation. Now, with Razer calling it the Stream Controller, they're focusing more on the streaming aspect, like I said, as the Elgato competitor. But obviously, you could still use this and do whatever you want with it. It's not just for streaming. You can use it for gaming, photo editing, video editing, all that still. But side by side with the Stream Deck and the Razer Stream Controller, the Stream Deck is more simplified. It's a smaller slab with 15 LCD keys, and I was never really a fan of how the Elgato keys felt. They're just very, very mushy. Now on the Stream Controller, we get added extra functionality. Here we have 12 keys that can't physically be actuated, but they are touch capacitive, and they do give you a really nice vibration for feedback. On the outside of those 12 keys are a screen showing what the dials are, because then on each side of the device, you have three dials. So six dials total, and they also can be actuated. And obviously the dials here are something that the Elgato Stream Deck does not have. This will give you a lot of control for like audio and stuff, when you're color grading, all that. So you got six of them. And then on the bottom are eight round keys. These are pretty much set as like pages and a back button, but again, it's all configurable in the software. Now this video right now is not a review, more so just showing you guys what they revealed versus what's already out there. But as I mentioned, this is already a well-established product that I've used before, but I stopped using it because I just did not like the software. So we're gonna head back and check out the Loop Deck software. Okay, so booted up here, we have the Loop Deck software because again, this is not related to Synapse at all. Synapse does nothing with the actual stream controller. It is all done through Loop Deck. And thankfully, since I've used this last, they've done a lot of updating to it to make it slightly more user friendly, at least when it comes to, you know, the organization of all your plugins and functions and macros and stuff. So as you can see right here, we have the sort of interactive stream controller. You can press on the dials as well as the buttons on the bottom and the LCD screens and also go through your pages. Everything like we saw uh, with the actual Steam Deck is also drag and drop. So just to show you real quick, uh, go over here. Say I wanted to, you know, just go over keyboard key zero and drag it there boom simple as that obviously that's what you'd come to expect when it comes to making a very user-friendly experience however the one problem that i think still remains is it's just so daunting with how many things there actually are when i say that i mean by like all of these physical controls just in the os folder itself from literally like one function for each key things to the device there is just so much here that you have to really really know what you're looking for um, in order to get this configured the way you want so again you'll see here on the right side it has the sort of program specific functions we went through os 
uh, they have here like loop deck certain specific things like for your workspaces your touch pages but then there's the actual tie-ins like with OBS studio Streamlabs, twitch and Spotify Spotify premium is pretty cool you know make this pretty much a uh, multimedia player on the fly uh, but up top is also how you can configure a bit more so you'll see under main profile we have razor here because the second you get this plugged in and turned on this is their own sort of default razor profile and when you click on this you have a lot of other um, programs and software that can automatically be set to the stream controller so for example after effects here now they have a bunch of preset um, all your effects and functions <clears throat> shortcuts all on the fly just literally ready there pretty much a lot of the main Adobe stuff you know so you got your Photoshop's your Premiere Pro's and then if you want you know go to your home profile you can change up and make different workspaces which is pretty much just like different profiles for being in um, you know again it sounds confusing because workspaces are different from profiles um, but it's putting more pages onto the profile so once you're in a program um, it'll kind of change it up for you and this obviously is very close to what they're going for when it comes to sort of copying the workflow of the elgato steam deck but uh i said steam deck stream deck here we go uh, but again it's there's just still so much that you have to figure out and sort of sit down and learn for yourself in order for you to get this properly set up and functioning the way you want to and even though again this is miles better than what it used to be last year when I first got the loop deck live in and started messing with it because for you know photo editing and video editing it's just so much in front of you that it really is intimidating and it made me not want to use it so while the program now with the loop deck software is still better I still think they have a long way to go because Elgato makes it so easy and user-friendly and this really isn't that hopefully down the line they'll have cooler integrations and again a bit more simplified UI here because there's nothing really like razor specific you know like again there's nothing in here really that can make you do things like change the chroma on your headset if you got like an RGB headset or change the DPI of your mouse with one of the dials there's nothing like that there's nothing razor specific this is just the regular loop deck software um, another thing to touch on before we move on here because like I know you know software is usually the more boring aspect of reviews um, but one of the things it does have going for it is the marketplace again Elgato has this as well um, with the marketplace you can download other profiles for again other programs and software as you can see right uh, right here in front of you uh, more specific plugins again so uh, one of the funny things here is they actually have a Elgato plugins if you want to control your Elgato key lights and stuff um, different icon packs as well so if you want to have these user made community made icon packs to quickly and easily just throw on your stream controller you can so the fact that they do have a growing marketplace is good to see because I think that's really uh, what's going to carry the software and make it more accessible to more people because the more the marketplace has the less you have to do you know and again I don't mean to keep beating a dead horse here but in today's day and age when our attention span is so little and decreasing yearly it's gonna take people a lot of time to not only figure this out but to get it set up the way they want it and then be happy with it it's just it's still too much for the average gamer or streamer to properly configure the way they want I think so at the end of the day I'm kind of confused and let down by this announcement and I'll tell you why because you know the only physical difference here between the loop deck live and the stream controller is literally the branding bringing pretty much to life the meaning of you're just paying for a name or a label so I ask you what's stopping anybody from going and purchasing the loop deck live right now why wait until fall 22 to get your hands on the razor stream controller when it currently exists you know why what's gonna stop people from going on eBay or Amazon and buying one of these used for a discounted price versus paying the retail $270 when this eventually launches so without any sort of exclusive features or anything to this there's no reason why anyone's gonna wait a few months when this is currently on the market 
and it's the same exact thing. They need Razer exclusive something in order to this, in order for this to be appealing to somebody wanting just the Razer name tag on it. It's very, very confusing. I'm happy we're getting, you know, more alternatives and competition to the Elgato Stream Deck because in the end, you know, competition is always a great thing for the consumer. And now Razer finally has their Elgato uh, Stream Deck, you know, alternative product out there. I just wish they would have put the research, the time, the development into creating their very own unique Stream Deck controller and not just rebranding what currently exists out there. Now, the only silver lining in all of this is the fact that we are probably guaranteed eventually to be getting a refreshed Razer Deathstalker Ultimate. If you don't know what that is, a few months back, I did a video revisiting the 2012 Razer Deathstalker Ultimate keyboard, which was a keyboard 10 years ago that had the Elgato Stream Deck built in. You know, they're already calling this their Switchblade keys, which is exactly what they called the keys in the Deathstalker Ultimate keyboard, the Switchblade. So they're rebranding that as these are Switchblade keys now, which just has to guarantee these will be implemented in a keyboard down the line yet again, which has me pumped up. Now, their Loop Deck collaboration is just that right now. It'll be seen whether they do have a formal merge or you know a buyout, kind of like how Elgato uh, was purchased by Corsair, and now they are pretty much one. So it'll be very interesting to see if for a future keyboard, possibly, uh, they do you know Razer purchases Loop Deck or if it's just another collab like we have now. But like I said, a very bizarre kind of announcement that they're rebranding a product already out there and calling it their own. But that silver lining is potentially these keys in a keyboard down the line, hopefully. So that'll wrap it up, showing you guys the brand new Razer Stream Controller. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check out the Loop Deck Live, I'll have it for you in the description down below. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.